Good day, and welcome to Common Man's Corner. Tonight we're going to be talking about politics. With me, I have Brian and Jeff. In Canada, uh, as many of you know here, come October 19th, we're going to have another federal election. And within these federal elections, of course, or any politics, things get quite heated, both amongst how the whole system works, this party over that party, this leader over that lead leader, um, promises that are given, broken, made, not intended to be used, etc. So, <clears throat> first off, I'm going to get into is, is how the whole election works. Um, in general, local candidates in, in, in any particular riding will be voted upon amongst all the parties or, or the parties that are being represented in the area. The one with the most votes, of course, gets it, and that lands a seat in the House of Commons. The party overall with the most seats in the House of Commons, of course, becomes the majority or minority government, the government in charge, which will then elect their leader or their uh, party leader as the prime minister. Now that's all done through the vote. Officially, after that's done and chosen that way, the Governor General of Canada will officially elect him as the representation of the Queen as the Prime Minister of Canada, because we are still technically part of the whole monarchy thing, officially, and then away we go. Now, me personally, I have a couple issues with, with, with many different levels of it, um, and the party system and the tier system when it comes to voting. Uh, for instance, my personal opinion, that where we deal with the party system the way we do, I have, I have too many choices or factors I don't like or may not like. For instance, with the local rep, whether you're a PC supporter or a liberal supporter, or NDP or whatever, you, could, you have their personal rep in the area, right? That's the person you're elected. But in reality, you're not just electing them. You're either electing them plus their party or them plus their leader of the party. Or you may not even like them. You may think they're a colossal twat in the, in the area and they'll be totally useless to you. But you want that party and that leader. Or you might think the party ideas suck, but he's the best for your particular area. It's, and, ha it's happened to me before. Right. right. <clears throat> I voted for somebody specifically because I didn't want somebody else to be the uh, the NP. But I wasn't a fan of that party. But I, I voted for the person because I thought he would do a better job. Right? At least for your immediate local area. Which, of course, you can't. I can't knock anybody for, I mean... This is where I live. I want here to have the best representation that I can get out of the choices I have. Um, but in turn, that means, like you, you might have had to support a party you didn't agree with their platform. Mm, I have. Or you might not even have a big deal with the particular party and their platform, or at least all of it, but you might really dislike their leader. You're sure of luck, right? Sure. So, I mean, when you take all this into account, you have, well, we'll say four official major parties you hear about at least the most often being the PCs, the Liberals, the NDP, and the Green Party. Right. You do have the Wild Rose Party and the Block, and I don't know, is the Block even doing anything this year? Because I haven't heard anything about them at all. I'm not sure. I have to look into that more maybe. <clears throat> um, obviously, I'm not going to vote in that area anyway because there's no reps that way. But um, in the last federal election, I looked it up there and stuff like that, officially they had 19 different parties running. The four mains and then any other slew of people that thought they might have been able to do things better. Now, that, I think, diversifies the vote vastly. But we'll say we'll, we'll stick with the four main parties. Okay? So you got, you got four local areas, if you have them all in your area. There's four choices right there. Then you get your four parties to choose from. Then you have your four leaders to choose from. There's 12 different factors involved there that you have to weigh in every time you want to cast a vote. Yes. Yeah, that's true, but there's... there's a lot of variables, but it would it would ha you'd have to be life's not perfect. I mean, you'd, you'd have to have to have the MP you want and the party you want and the leader that you want and all. And you just can't have it all. You got to pick the best of. You got to do what you always do. You pick the best of. Uh, make the best choice you can with what you have. And I think that's what I try to do. I mean, I try. I mean, I I do. So it's not about picking the right one. It's about picking the Right the one that's less wrong. Well, that's what, that's what no voting right answer, always it is. Sounds like it's voting's just always pick, picking the, the least wrong. wrong. <laughs> well, overall, that's I think horrible. so. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, taking that into account, it's the way the system runs for our voting system. Uh, like it or leave, it kind of deals with what we're stuck with as a, as a rule. 
Um, each of us, I think, has just very quickly here expressed a, a slight displeasure with the fact that it happens that way. But as of yet, there's not really a whole lot of way to change our system of those factors unless you overhaul the whole system. Um, you have to. Now, a couple issues I have with it, uh, also, just to keep going with this here particular trend of thought here, is I vote for my local that I want to run. Um, we'll say, you know, we get Utopia here, and it happens to be the same party I happen to support and the same leader. Yeah. Now, they vote in, they get ready to go, but the party decides to pull a switcheroo, and get rid of that leader and put a different leader in the next day or a few weeks into it or whatever else, I see a big factor with that. I, I see that as, 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 at the very least, in poor taste of representation uh, of the promises you've given to the public. Um, now, not to speak too ill of the dead here, but in the past, for instance, we had like what happened with Jack Lee, um, very charismatic leader, had potential to be a good leader, um, at least in some aspects. Uh, new, new stuff, at least enough how to campaign well on the campaign trail. So that whether you agree with his party or his ideas or whatever else, he knew the system and he, and he played with it well. Um, he was terminally ill. And as will happen with all eventually, he passed away. But going into this, he went into the election as the leader of the NDP party, knowing he was terminally ill, campaigning the promise to be the Prime Minister of Canada and lead Canada to a new, into the new horizons for the next four years, knowing that he couldn't do it. Um, to me, that's second only, like, that's, that's I suppose, close to fraudulently or misrepresentation of your promises as you can get. Well, what, as the leader of your party, aren't you really just the voice of what your party is going to do? Therefore, it really makes no difference who's at the head. You're really fulfilling the wishes of the party. It's not really your ideas you push forward, are they? Your party has its own platform, its own... Uh, I mean, but then again, leaders can have different uh, different opinions. Different of, opinions uh, and, and if you happen to be the one in charge at the time, the authority, you have a certain amount of X more sway. Yeah, yeah. And, and in this particular case, um, I'm not saying everybody, because like some people went because it was Jack Layton, some people went because they believed in the NDP party or their platform. Be yeah, up for some reason, but anyway, <laughs> some people went for the <laughs> went for the idea that the local rep, the NDP local rep, would actually do some good. I have no idea why either, but. Um, but those who went on the fact that it was going to be Jack Layton leading the party, they were misled, intentionally or not. So then all of a sudden, it's over. A little while later on, he steps down. I mean, understandably so. The man was, was, in, was in ill health and dying. But at that point in time, everyone who voted for them and wanted that party in that position, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there's no recasting of votes. There's no more democracy involved. It's the party now chooses who they want to lead the show their way. So he led the party to the level of victory they got, or the level of achievement they had, steps down and lets somebody else runs the show. Yeah. Out of necessity, I'm not denying that, but yeah. the point is, it wasn't what was presented to the people, and it wasn't the people's decision at that point in time to have that leader. I think what you're saying is, is not untrue, but it doesn't bother me. Like, it just doesn't bother me personally. I believe that, if I believe in my party, I believe they're going to elect the best voice for my party. But you just said, you said a few minutes ago that you don't always elect the party itself. Sometimes no, I don't. it's a local rep or the leader. Yeah, I don't, but I, mean, I, I do associate myself with a certain party. Yes. I mean, no matter what. Now, I do associate myself with one of the three major parties, but yet I don't like the the leader per, on a personal level. I mean, not that I don't personally, but I don't, yeah. I don't like what he, I don't, when I see him on, on, on TV or whatever, I kind of, eh, you know, I'm not exactly a, a big fan of his, but... <laughs> If I had to identify with a party, there's one that I, I identify with. You know, I mean, there's, there's one out of, out of the three the main ones that, that to me. Now, in, in a hypothetical situation, that particular party leader steps down. Somebody else steps up. Great. Full support behind the party, the new leader, because, well, you don't like the old leader, and therefore it's a new one, therefore we can only go better, or whatever. Um, it moves forward, gets the vote a week into it. The new leader says, nope, I'm stepping back down. The old one steps back up again. Bam, we have him as a prime minister. Totally against what the wishes would be of maybe a lot of people that voted. Because they didn't, they, they specifically voted only because yeah. the other one stepped down, we'll say. And now he's back in again. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. 
the also the question you got is is your local rep which is there voted in to represent you in your area is he actually giving his or her right for the term of this here his means his or her are they actually giving their all to the local area that they're supposed to be or are they really just playing priority politics so that they don't piss off someone in the party and get their asses booted out or just just there for the pension or just for the pension which they get in like what four years and now they're actually uh, provincial level anyway i know uh the, the liberals for whatever fucking reason thinks they deserve it are trying to get it down to two years yeah. serve as a political officer for two years get a pension serve your army or your country in the military 25 years and get a much lesser pension yeah. <clears throat> serve in the rcmp same idea yeah. get a much lesser pension coast guard um doctors da, 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 da. somewhere where you're actually serving your country right, serving the public. right not just serving your pocket yeah so anyway, <clears throat> I have an issue with that too, but we can get into that one later on here a little bit more. We'll come back to it. So, but if that leader, under a new leadership, we'll say that that party gets in under a new leadership, within a couple of days, he can turn around and say, no, I'm stepping down now. And the party says, nope, we're putting the other one back in because they liked him, but nobody else in the world likes him and they knew no, this. I, 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 think you're, I think you're right. And at that point in time, it just doesn't bother. there's no way for the public or the people to then ex that the party has to do it or the other parties have to team up along with enough people of his party to call for a vote of incompetence and then remove him from or have him removed to the governor general of that from parliament but there's nothing the people can do if it's a truly democratic society now i realize you can't have a vote every or an election every year that's kind of where i was thinking man you're asking for really a lot of paperwork for yeah. just a few people that are you're never going to please in the end it's always going to well, be people you're not going to please so right. i'm now not saying you're talking about pushing a huge political process just because somebody stepped down, somebody else come up. Yeah, you didn't like the guy, but you know what? The important thing was the party, not the man at the helm. The party's politics is what you're aiming for, right? You believe in X. You, that hoping, party does X. You're going to hope he represents You just hope the right, party. he does a good job, that's all. Right, but, if, but it's, he's still doing what you believe But it's in. still a political misrepresentation if, they, if this is intended. Now it would be almost impossible to prove no, it be intended, it but it's intended, pretty it clear. Is, but it's pretty, I mean, well, in the event of like what happened with Jack Layton, he knew he was terminally ill running into it, but he also knew that if he stepped down and let somebody else new take over the party... Yeah, he was extremely popular. Right. So it was, in a way, yeah. I see it was purposely mean. misleading. Now, I understand the idea behind it. Put your best foot forward, get, get in the game as best you can, yeah. and then have the person step down, someone else take over, and away he keeps going through that. But to me, that was purposely, negligently misleading. No, I think he, he was good at, at reaching people. I think people yeah, he was. Well, he was just their best were, salesman, that's all. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm not knocking that, but... And when you run to become the prime minister as the leader of the party in an election, you are telling the Canadian people, I am going to lead you or attempt to lead you prosperously for the next four years. That's how long our elections minimum can or yeah, maximum can be is four years. Sorry. Yeah, maximum is five. Um, actually, it's four now in, in 2008 or 2011, whatever they changed the PCs under Harper, changed it officially that can go a maximum of four years when you have to call for the election. It used to be five. Uh, in the state of an emergency, such as uh, theater of war, da, 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 they can extend it to the five-year mark. Oh, yeah. But it's four years, I think it is. He, they passed it here. I was reading up on it. Um, but he said, I'm going to lead the country for the next four years. And a lot of people said, hey, he's charismatic. He knows what he's doing. He, he puts off a good game or a good, you know, okay. Then all of a sudden, but he did it full well knowing that he would not be in for those four years and couldn't do it. Anywhere else... That's misrepresentation at the very least, or it's or it's. Maybe he was just hoping to have more than four years. I mean, we all hope for more, but I mean. Did, did, we, did, did he know at the time of the election that he, uh, was, that he, he was said he split? stepped? Well, he stepped down pretty fast right afterwards, saying that he's it's been some time knowing that this is that he's terminally ill and he didn't last that long. And I'm not saying this in a, in a bad way. I mean, he did what was best, what he thought was best for either the country or his party, but it was against and misleading to the public of Canada. And the people of Canada, in which case, that's what, this, that's what democracy is to be about. Uh, I guess my big point isn't so much that I wanted to be able to cast a vote every single time someone's not happy, for instance, with a new leader or a different leader or someone gets sick and dies or whatever. What I'm saying is if there is enough people that are against, that are willing to sign up and against a particular party winning, or then there should be an avenue to be able to remove somebody. Uh, we're talking federal level right now, but I'm talking provincial level even. For instance... A while back, um, in Nova Scotia here, like the NDPs were in, now the Liberals were in, some of that. And there was quite a bit of discord with the NDP toward the end there, so then they wanted them out. And a lot of people were saying, like, you, you know, they got to go, they got to go. 
We're not happy with the way Nova is going. We're not happy with the way the political scene is. And everyone said, yep, there's not a damn thing we can do about it. Our hands are tied. We're stuck with them for four years no matter what. And at no point in time do I think in a, in a democracy or a democratic society, should the people, if they're unsatisfied with their government representation, be stuck with anybody for four fucking years? Yeah. Or three years or two more years or, Jesus, it's been made pretty clear. We're voting your ass out no matter yeah. what. Well, I can do whatever damage I want because I'm stuck in for a year and you can't do a thing about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying in, in, a, in a province with a population of 900,000, 500 people sign a pin and then all of a sudden we've got to call for a new election here, right? Yeah. Let's make it a, a rather sizable chunk of the population or enough support to make it reasonable. But, um, and, and on a different, slightly different note, like for instance in the States, now I realize we're not Americans, if it's that right, and I don't like necessarily their, their whole legal or uh, political system. But there are aspects of it I find interesting and, or beneficial or good. <laughs> and if enough people sign a, pit, a petition, the president himself looks at it, right? And then, because it has to be brought forth to him. It has to be addressed. It goes above the state. It goes above, it goes to the prime, to the president, I mean. Yeah. It'd be the same idea of this, that if enough people sign this petition over, and I'm not saying as soon as day one starts, the election's over, we start a petition and it lasts two and a half, three years where we get enough people signed on it because, you know, I'm mad at you today, I'll sign it, but I'm not mad next week because I've seen where you're going with it and it's fixed it. No, you have a certain, like, a 90-day period or a 60-day period or 45 or 30 or 20 days or whatever. If you can get enough of the population to sign off saying we are unsatisfied with the way the government is running and you're only two years in, the reason I say two years is you have to give a government at least one year to get their feet wet to get into the mud and say, okay, where the hell's the bottom of whatever I think the issues are, and try to start moving it forward. Like, you can't call it within six months, because they, they haven't even had a chance to go through all the freaking books yet and sort out and, and try to get the ball rolling. So you'd have to wait a year at least, or maybe into the second year at least, two years. But if you're not satisfied after two years, that they've done nothing that they've politically promised, at least on a provincial level, right? You know, federal level might be a little <clears> different, but it's the same idea. What's the population of Canada? Pick a certain amount of population that they call for it, and I, it would have to be quite a bit bigger because you're talking a much vaster area um, or a larger area, larger population. <clears throat> but like on provincial level, at the very least, you know, if you get a big enough population, says I want you gone because I, we have no idea where the hell you're going. Yeah, that's what you've vo- you've made no. Ad- that's what voting is. Voting is the population saying I want you gone. But it's every four it's years, and there's a waiting that, out that four years. You have yeah. to wait a minimum of four years, and then like if you're not happy after a year or two. And like no, like almost no one's happy. You're still stuck with them for two more years yeah. of raping and pillaging and or, or, or thieving and or doing things totally opposite what we thought you were going to do as as a as a population as a whole, not just me or you or you, yeah. right? I think there should be a way to force the hand of the government to call another vote. Like don't get me wrong, I'm not saying let's get two million people of the thirty million people say it, then all of a sudden you'd have to get it. But I am saying that if enough of the population want a revote because this is just well, I think utmost how, foolish. Like, how many people, uh, what's the percentage of people that vote in an election? <clears throat> uh, the last election, 2011, we had 61.4% of voters, eligible voters voted. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think that those are the only people who should be able to vote out somebody midway, partway. Because, I mean, if you're not, if you're not voting in the first place, yeah. <clears throat> then uh, just, I guess, you, don't have, you have a right to express your opinion, but if you're not voting in the first place, yeah, you didn't help make the decision who's in. What well, now gives you the right to step back after the show, after the after the pitch has been thrown, That's right. and say you should do something different? Uh, you know, <clears throat> I, I could almost understand that one. Yeah. Um, I'd have to think on that part. I never thought of that, but I'd have to think on that part more before I said I agree or disagree. Yeah, and you can't even get everybody to, together to, to come out and vote, let alone uh, do something like that. It's hard to get people to vote. Like I said on, on a federal level, down a provincial level, I'm not a hundred percent sure on how many voted the last time. No, or, I don't know either. Um, I never looked into that because I tend to kind of, I kind of get sidetracked here on the provincial versus federal. But um, at the very least, if nothing else, provincially, a lot of issues I think could be fixed in, in this way of understanding and, and stuff like that could be changed if halfway through, and, and like I said, a minimum time, two years or whatever of the four years, make it so that people can call upon a way to get them out. Because like I said, I knew a lot of people that would love to have had in, now, for good or bad. Now, in the states, they do have something like that, really, when you look at it, because they have uh, they have their the election for their um, you know whatever they have for representatives, whatever, 
You know, I think I actually I think they they vote for the uh, for the president, don't they? They vote yeah. for the yeah. they vote for the party they want, and then they vote up to but half, who's running. But halfway through, they have uh, their their midterm elections where they where they put people in their uh, Senate, I think it is, yeah. and uh, or I think in their their House of Representatives, whatever they have, or in the, and they can take the power away from the government if the government, you know, if they have people in the Senate, they can take and just push things right right through like my like a majority government here. Yes, but halfway through, they can actually change. They can swap out who leads these different. I'm not trying to pretend I know about American politics. I don't. Uh, but they can actually sw- swap the people out so they, they take away the power. So it just gives the government less teeth, and they have, they really can't do anything. They can really kind of. Well, you have to do what the people want more. I, I think there's there's good points to that. Like I, I don't know all the details here, but that is the same idea that I'm I'm kind of hinting at here, because as a leader of a party or a party or even a local figure making promises. Like, they make promises, they have a certain platform, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to promise you X, Y, and Z, da, da, da. As soon as they're in, yep, I'm through the door, boys, you guys are screwed, you're stuck with me for the next four years, screw you, hippies. No. And they can do whatever they want. they got car blanc, they got a clean slate to do whatever the hell they want to, because they know for the next four years, Maybe their pension should stuck. rely on every, fulfilling all those promises. Mm-hmm. Maybe they should something be tied to the At least promises. a percentage of the promises. At least you know that responsible government. I would see that responsible kick in sometime. Yeah. yeah. Well, in that case, you'd have to have all. It'd have to be in the event of like on uh, provincial level politics, because on provincial level politics, you have your premier, and that's it. Like they are the party in charge and the story. On on federal level, you can have a majority government, in which case the two opposition or the remaining opposition parties cannot make enough to go against them. In the event of a majority government, then they have to fulfill, say, seventy five percent of their promises at least. We'll say a minimum, just because yeah. you can't. No one's going to do one hundred percent of anything. You just can't do it. You can try. That's why they use the words "try" or "we aim to" or "we want to." Things come up. Things change. Economics, world economics, crisis, whatever. Right. I so I don't want to. I don't want to is the biggest factor now. But <laughs> so if you made it, you had to have sixty or seventy-five percent or something like that. Then yeah, that'd be reasonable. In the event though, you have a minority government, a party cannot fulfill. Re- their, their promises because yeah, they, they just don't have the clout to do it because the other parties obviously are going to go directly against them. Yeah. Now, that's something two people really, like, I'm going to throw this out here. Um, in the event that you have a minority government, understand that the government that has the official opposition, their job is to make the, the, make the country run as smooth as they can, but their real goal is to make the actual government in charge fail and look like shit so that they can get in charge next time. That's what their real political right. opinion is. So, if a party does not provide what they promised you in the event of a minority government, nine times out of ten, it's not because they didn't try. Yeah. It's because people they say, were prevented from doing it. People say that when you have a minority government, that, <coughs> that uh, it's better for us because everybody okay. has to work together, but nobody ever works together. All they ever do is yeah. just sit there and... and, and uh, try to slit each other's throats exactly. to make them it. win in the end. Yeah. And you can end up with... Uh, nothing happening. Nothing happening. People making... Emerging governments, which I mean, if I vote for a, a certain government on that, I find worse than what you're talking about, like having uh, a leader switch or yeah, someone switch change leader. around. For me, if I vote a certain party and then they merge with a party that I that I absolutely vote, hate, yeah, this like I don't like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that to happen. Yeah, I don't think you should be able to merge midterm. Like if you're in, you're it. If you can't do it on your own, get in or whatever else then you're stuck with what you got until the next election or whatever else, and then going into the election, merge your parties before you go into it and become the new party and try to get elected. This this whole... Have you ever heard of parties merging? How does that work? Don't you have separate opposing political views, and all of a sudden one of you caves? That's not a merger. That's well, a that or you might compromise. I'll, true. We'll take these three or four points from my, part, my, my, my political agenda, and you'll take your three or four main points, and, and then we'll agree that this is going to be the new platform, and go! And in actuality, what you're probably doing is just promising to the public. Mm-hmm. The ones that, like, what's your most popular points? These are my most popular points? We'll promise this, and we'll just do whatever the hell we want when we get in there anyway. Huh. Right? So, I mean, I mean, couldn't two parties get together and say, hey, prior to the election, let's say, hey, like, as long as one of us gets in, you know, yeah. we'll merge afterwards. Yeah, and they could. There's no t- I mean... You're going to uh, you're going to run the risk that a lot of your support and or financial support might say "fuck you, I'm out of here," pull pin and leave, right? Maybe, but you're the winner, so why would they do that? Because you're the winner for four years. 
after that, if you've pissed everybody off that pays your way into it, it's political suicide and you're done. That's assuming you've pissed everybody else off. But True. You got your in, right? That was your in. That was your initial in. Um, I didn't know they could merge. That's interesting. Yes, well, the, like, uh, they can merge and they can uh, just form a coalition. Like, I mean, they can form a coalition and vote the same in, in Parliament, which is probably what I meant to say. But I, I mean, parties do merge, though, just like the Reform Party and the P. Like, if you, you keep calling the PCs, the PC party doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, true. It's, it, they re, they uh, joined the Reform Party in 2003. Now they're the Conservative Party of Canada, right? Yeah. But uh, I think what I, what I was actually talking about when I said the word merge was... was to form a coalition so that they, they vote the same way in in, 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 uh, in parliament which you know the, the two if you have two minority uh, well they're all minority I guess but if you have two parties that, that don't have very many people they, they vote the same way they can they can change them right? they, uh, well for instance it, like I said in the event of a, a minority government um, we'll say I'm the leader of the minority government you two know that if you constantly team up you can overthrow me or, or, or stop me from doing what I got to do or want to do because I simply don't have enough seats to force it to happen. Um, it's, it's a touchy line in there, obviously, because it's only going to take so long before the people that follow you or the people that follow your party are going to say, hey, you're stopping everything from happening that's good for us just to make them look bad. But on the other hand, if there's a key point or two that I've campaigned on, you guys are going to do your best to make sure I fail at that because then I look like an ass. And trust me, I'm good enough looking like an ass on my own. I don't need help. But... Um, you're going to stop that from happening. So I understand, like, like when we talked earlier, but you have to meet a certain amount of campaign promises. As a majority government or a provincial level government, once you get in, you have the authority, then that should be mandatory. That's just the way it is. You have to meet a minimum. At the end of your four years, if you don't meet the minimum, there should be some kind of... Well, if you're making a promise, you should be making all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you have a list of things that you'd like to do, that's one thing. Okay, like maybe 75% of the things that we would like campaign to have done, done but or... if it's a promise, it should be a promise. Yeah, you, you said you're going to do it, do yeah, it. Do it, yeah. In the event of a majority government, it should be, like, yeah, you, you said you are going to lower taxes 1% or 2% or whatever. It better have dropped. Otherwise, you've broken your campaign promise, and I think there should be at least some kind of, uh, of political or, or party repercussions against that. Um, because there's just no accountability. I can promise you anything I want to. Get in and say, yeah, I have no intention of doing that, guys. You know what, if someone come out and said, I'm going to promise you all kinds of things in the world, but in the end, when I get in and deal with the situation, when I actually know all the ins and outs, I'm just going to go ahead and do what I think is best at the moment anyway. I'd probably vote for that person, because if nothing else, he's just not political bullshitting you. <laughs> Whether I like the person or not, you know what I mean? At least they're coming out and saying something honest. Because yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what happens. Now, to get back to uh, the whole voting thing, 61.4% um, turn voter turnout. That's a pretty low turnout when you consider... This is running the gov- This is running the country for all 100% of the people of the country. Only 64% of the people cast a vote. Mm-hmm. I never used to. When nobody, I was young. nobody represents me. This is supposed to be a representative government. None of them represent me. None, you, of, them, none of them want to actually make the make this country better. So they're just looking out for their own political I don't, I don't vote asses. Right. Can't fix the system by voting anybody in either because the system itself is broken. Well, I think they said that earlier. You're not you're not necessarily voting in the best person. You're simply voting in the least bad. Right, and that's the hor- most horrible thing you can say. Oh yeah, I love my government. I don't vote for the best. I vote for who I think is the least worst. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's, it, it's 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 true. It's true. Yeah. So so what would you like to see happen then, Brian? Like like obviously you don't you're not happy with the party system we have. No, I, I don't like the party system. Because would you be more happy? I have to choose between important things. Like I have to choose between healthcare, education, bullshit. Both of them should get everything. Like, right? mm-hmm. not one or the other. It's everybody should get these things. It's anything that's publicly related that needs to be funded shouldn't be a question. It should every every single party should be like, we're gonna give everything to these people. They all need it. Need, everybody needs education. Everybody needs, needs health care. These aren't questions of which one. It's we gotta find out how to get them all to have this stuff. But there's only so many dollars to give them all this stuff. Damn, that's gonna get fixed. Back to our early choice of money. Oh yeah, it all comes back to money. Um, the monetary system is going to get fixed. If you can't, if you can't supply everybody everything the public needs with the current system, then the system's broken. You've got to find a way to supply everybody's needs. Period. And there shouldn't be a we're going to give it to this a little bit to that. No, it's. I'm not sure. Everybody needs it. The system's not right. I'm not sure. I totally disagree with what you're saying. I think I, don't, I think it's an impossibility. 
um, to have happen that way myself. I don't disagree with the niceness of it or, or, or the it'd be great to have it happen. But that being said, I think there should be four or five major points that every government, it's automatically part of their platform, non-negotiable, like education and health care. And, you know, then after that, you can add your particular party's platform, whether you like this or like that. Yeah. Um, but it is true, like, if you go amongst the main parties or, or the main four or whatever else, three or four, um, one party, if they're strong in just support and education and secondary education, the other, the other party... You're pretty much counting on if you vote them in, you're getting squat all because you're going to they're going to go into health care because that's what they're running on, <clears throat> appealing to the set of public that need more health care help, or this party is really trying to appeal to a certain population density that needs the extra education, or this particular ones are trying to appeal to those who like the environment or support the military, or 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 like they all picking, and, and what they're, they're they're campaigning. I mean, it's like anything else. They're, they're simply trying to buy your votes for making promises to them. But I think there should be every party should have a mandate of a certain two or three anyway that are mandatory like healthcare and education because without either, I don't think the next generation is is useful to us. You know, if you got no health, proper health care, your country's pooch, and if you ain't got a proper education system, your country's pooch really in the, the long only, run. Really, the only things we should be platforming are in our things like public policy, gun control laws. But when it comes to public services, there should be no platforms. Every one of them should be forced to maintain all of them as best they can. Education, health, all those things. But that leaves it open to what they interpret as the best they can for the country at the time. Um, I think part of the problem can be fixed with, um, this probably stirred up, with the reduction of the amount of government we have. Yeah. For instance, if you go back 50, 60, 80 years ago, our level of government proportionate to the population was quite a bit smaller than it is now. Now, there's just so many people for so many positions, and it seems like every single year they add another dozen or two positions that need political officials officially to run them. Now, they say, well, it's because we're bigger or we're this, but it, I think we're just too top-heavy in the government. Like I said about before, the Canadian military... During World War II, we had seven, seven like seven generals, and now we have like sixteen. Um, we're in peacetime and pretty much have been. Don't get me wrong; there's been conflicts and stuff. I'm not being great. I'm not downplaying those. But why the hell do we have like seventeen generals when we ran a world level war with seven? And it's the same idea with this. Every single person has three aides that each have two assistants, oh, no, and each of the two assistants have too much crap like that. I mean, there's too you much. know ten gophers and da 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 da. And every one of them gets a full pension, and everyone gets full medical and full dental, and da 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 da. And when you add up all those dollars first, okay, what do we have left of the budget for the rest of the country? Well, let's clear this up. On a provincial level or even a federal level, it's going to take this much to do education. It's going to take this much to do medical. It's going to take this much for transportation. The money's gone. It's a lot. It's gone. Well, we don't have enough to pay everybody then. Then maybe we have to downsize our government and simply make do with what we got. It's like anything else. If an organization, any organization, at the end of the day, it doesn't have enough dollars to do everything they got to do and pay everybody. They downsize their people. A company does it. An organization yep. does it. Yep. But our government, what do we do? Let's create more positions and tax them. And we'll use their tax dollars to pay for more positions. But the problem is the taxes aren't as much as you're paying out to the people to begin with. Mm. You've created a loop that you're it's spiraling down. But I don't know how you fix things. That's just it. I don't know how you... I mean... He's going to write. I mean, already from the stuff he's saying, uh, Brian. Sorry, if, if you if you were to sit there and write out how you think the government should be, it's different from what I think. Right. And that's what's. That's I what's know hard. it's all different than I think. Right. I mean, it, well, but I guess it's, it'd be one of. I don't know. There's, there's too many officials. I think if you're going to make if you're going to create a new position, well, that's what that's that's, that's and just simply make up new positions, it should have to go through a review board or maybe a voting system. Um. And that, that'll bring me into a topic here that's a, kind of a heated one for me. In the states, or at least on certain levels of law making, for instance, if they want to pass a new law, at least a state level, they put it to a vote to the people. Like, for instance, a couple of years back here, they passed a law for school zones. Had to be reduced an additional 20 kilometers an hour driving into them, no matter where you are. So I can drive by one school in Nova Scotia at 70, and I can't, right? Another school just down the road a little bit, because it used to be 70, is now 50. And the school that's right up the road from where we are now, it used to be 50, has been my whole life. There's never been an accident, a kid struck, or anything else in the whole time that I can possibly remember. And now we have to do 30 there. Mm. But yet you go, 
eight kilometers down the road, and the school used to be 70, now 50. Now, the one down the road doesn't have the fencing around the places, doesn't have a sidewalk right in front of it. Apparently, the one eight kilometers up the road, the kids... Uh, the smarter? They don't care for the kids as much. They, they either don't care for the kids, or the kids must be brilliantly smarter. I don't know. Right? But, so, it was a redundant law that most people aren't happy with. I mean, you get a few loud most that were very happy for it, or a few people that were... Pro, 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 and they're the ones you saw in the media or in the news or on the radio screaming and hollering, we got to save our kids, we got to do this, we got to do that. And the government said, okay, here's your law. Vote for me, pretty much, right? Or, okay, here's the law, shut up and go away so that way you stop bringing attention to us on what we're doing. Well, back to your original point, you said in the states they... <clears throat> on, on, on certain levels, like I said, I'm not sure if it's federal laws or just the provincial know, level, but they, they got to uh, vote on They actually put it out to a vote to the people and the I know people they do say no. In California, just from a, you hear in California, they have like, uh, I think they tie it in with their, uh, what, when they vote. Yep. I think they add things on the ballot, like, you know, would you, you can agree to this yeah, law or that? Like to, I think. Okay. And if they want to pass one in the middle, they still got to put it to the public and call for it. In a now, type thing. Right. Now, people say, and before I even hear this here, because it's the most redundant thing I've heard, the government will come to a complete standstill, nothing will get done. No, it won't. What will happen is the government will stop passing all these redundant, stupid, fly-by fucking night because I'm a rea knee-jerk reaction to something that's going on right now. Laws that will affect everybody forever because I want to shut some certain people up or because I want to look good in certain people's eyes or because I want to look like I'm actually proactively doing something that I'm really not. I'm just so going to pass another law, pass another law. By stopping that, because the idea of the government is you're, you're electing people to represent the people's wants and wishes majority like, obviously you're not going to get or sorry majority yeah that sounds good English um, obviously not, not everyone's going to be viewing the same wants and likes and dislikes but the majority of the people that because the government's been elected it's assumed that the majority of the people at least that chose to vote or not elected them in and by doing this they're representing what the majority want but in actuality once they're in like they got a clean slate they can do what they want to we simply take the chains off this one and put them onto the next one. So instead of wearing blue chains, now for the next four years we're going to wear red ones. We're not happy with red ones, so next time we're going to wear orange ones. You know, per se. I think by having it so you have to vote the law, we'll say, at least at a provincial level and even federal level for big laws and stuff like that, you got to put it to the people. Let the people decide. You're there. You're, you've you been elected to represent us and what we want and what we like or, or we are supporting your political platform. It doesn't mean we want you to govern every aspect of our life forever from here on in no. with what you pass now. It means we think you have the best representation of us at the moment, and therefore you have the. we think you're going to bring forward the best ideas to the best advancements. But in the end, it shouldn't be the government making the final decisions on how the people live well, no, and do why, with that's the laws. That's why you have a representative that, that goes to parliament or legislature. And the whole, the whole point is that he, he or she sorry, is supposed to represent you. And... Uh, <coughs> And, and that's just it. I think there has to be maybe a closer uh, or a better, uh, you know, like between my 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 representative and, and me. Like I, I, I've, I've never he's never asked me. He or she's never asked me what I want. I mean, I vote for them, but that's the end of it. But the, I, I nobody ever, you know, if I mean if they had like a town hall or something to ask people what they what they wanted every once in a while or. or are you happy with this law that we're about to pass? Yeah, just like, and you can have a chance. But these guys here, like, it's like they, they walk in Monday morning and decide, okay, um, this is big in the news right now, getting a lot of hype. We're going to pass a new law. Boom. It's and unless there's something that is fast on the draw with it to shut down, it's we'll pass it, we'll put it in the, into the books, and then we'll wait to see if the Supreme Court is going to shut it down later. That's the wrong way to do things. If it's not what the people want for a law, it shouldn't get to that point. Um, and as like, like you said about your a little more one on one maybe with the local rep, yeah. it goes back to what we very first discussed at the very first of the show. The local rep, once you vote him in, is no longer there to represent you. He's there to make sure politically the party is happy with him and keeps him in. So if the party wants this law, he doesn't give a rat's ass anymore whether you or you or you or you no, or me or, no. or anybody else out there wants this law or not. The leader if the he party. goes against it. The party ex nays him, kicks his ass right. out, and he's gone or sitting in a back bench, right. and you know he's never getting back in again. That's right. That's so it. at that point in time, any loyalties he had or should have had because you voted them in stops once that ballot's cast. Yeah, whatever the whatever the leader of the party wants, they, they tell them. Yeah, you're going to vote this, this way, and if you, you don't, vote. yeah, you get a few people that will say, "Oh, I'm switching sides," but unless the other party 
has guaranteed you positions of uh, a certain position or a certain amount of uh, guaranteed that you're going to be in their government and used, um, you're not going to switch sides. Now, there's something that, that you, you were talking about, the, the leader, you know, swapping out leaders and how you, how you felt about that. I, I feel more strongly against uh, my representative switching sides. Yes. I have picked a certain, uh, you know, uh, person to represent par- party me. that I want to align myself with, and now he or she has said, yeah, no, not anymore, I represent this. This is what I mean. Now, that's wrong. I agree with that. I, I don't care how mad you are at your at, at the leader of the party or with the other people in your party. You shouldn't be, you know, because there are things that are fundamentally different between, say, liberals and conservatives. I mean, there are certain things that are liberal and that are conservative and that uh, they're just not going to change. They have their own... And set for, strong views. Yeah, for, you know, like, I mean, look at, look, let me just take an example. Conservatives are... Um, Friendlier to gun owners, we'll put it that way. Yes. Right, where liberals, you know, they want to lock up all the guns, they take all the guns away from everybody. And, and if, so if I if I vote in a conservative representative and they they cross the floor, and now I have a representative that wants gun control, now I'm, I'm upset. Very upset, and I agree with that. I think if you're going to switch sides, uh, your two options are step down or go completely neutral independent, represent the local area only yeah. until the next election because they have been elected to represent that area. At best case scenario, so you become completely neutral and aligned to no party. So, so I get this understanding, right? After I elect somebody in, they can flip flop. Oh, absolutely, the absolutely. They can just change. It's, 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 don't get me wrong. It can very quickly become a political suicide or a political advancement, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. But you can flip flop. Yeah. So <clears throat> we'll use this here. Um, yeah. By no they means am I saying like the Jeff represents party one. I represent party two. Brian decides he likes the platform of Brian t- uh, of Party Two for whatever reason. He, you elect me in against Party One because not so much you don't like you like Party Two more. We'll say we'll say you dislike Party One's view on guns or gun control. You elect me in, and then I don't know a month later, I'm like mm, surprise. I'm going that, to party one. That's not what happens, though. The thing, what happens is infighting. It, it's yeah. just, it's just, you've done something to, to piss off the leader, or you, or the, or the leader pissed you off, or whatever, and you just want to get back at them. So you, you just now you, you're making the other side stronger. But it absolutely happens all the time. Yeah. Well, I would say all the all time, time, but it, but it does happen. And therefore, you've taken officially, we'll say like Southwest Nova, you've taken them over to, they voted blue, we'll say, and now they're red. They're on red. And all of a sudden now, when it comes to the whole political maneuvering, there's more support for red than what than there, there was elected. Yeah, you can tip the scales, you know, if you have enough people do that. If you, you have a couple people that, all of a sudden you like, can change yeah. things in a hurry. Like, you could take a majority government and turn it into a minority government. Yeah, if well, I mean, if a few big rep- drastic, it, it would be, but it could happen. could happen. Totally against the wishes and the whims of the people who elected it. Yeah. And therefore, for the next two, three years, even though we'll, we'll say they go, they, they go, uh, they go, uh, Liberal takes it. Just pick a party. And all of a sudden, a bunch of them switch over to the NDP. Then all of a sudden, we could be looking at an NDP government or an NDP opposition party that's actually now stronger than the Liberal Party, even though they didn't have the votes from the people at the choice of election. That's not democratic. That's that's infighting amongst a select few elites that we've got stuck choosing amongst. So that's where my argument, like, whoop, sorry. That's where some of my argument is um, on, on being able to call maybe a vote because there was misrepresentation. Because people suddenly switch sides and all of a sudden now you find yourself on, well, you're on the other you're side the of the team. battlefield. Yeah, you're on the other team. You're on the, like, like, like I'm going this? into this here expecting, yeah. you know, speak English and now all of a sudden, you know, yeah. I'm speaking, you know, German in the Second World War. Like, I'm on the, you know, what's going on here? All because one leader decided that's the way it's going to be. Like, and, and no, I'm not comparing it to the battlefields of World War II and stuff like that. But it's the same idea. Like you suddenly find yourself on the opposition side, yeah. whether you wanted it or not, and whether you voted that way or not. Now, not everyone gets what they want for a vote and stuff like you said. But on the other hand, at that point in time, the representation of ten or twenty or fifty thousand or a hundred thousand people suddenly become on the shoulders of one person to do what they want with it. They now wield those hundred thousand voices or fifty thousand voices or ten thousand voices, yeah. and they're not representing them the way they were intended to. Because they have chose to go off in their own way. So, yeah. Now, I do agree with you that one, Jeff, fully. I, I think that's that rankles my, my cackles a whole lot more than even yeah, that's, the that's, idea of a leader worse. Worse. playing games. Leader, 
the leader pretty much has to follow the, the party. party platform. Anyway. Unless he's charismatic enough to have a, enough certain support, in which case you as, a, as an MP <laughs> or a representative in a local, smaller area, if you don't do what they I want, mean, uh, you're gone. I mean, the, the party should have a platform that is their, you know, they should have a beliefs or a platform that that is, uh, that's not going to change, right? So, uh, hopefully. You know. Well, uh, certain variables can change a certain amount. I mean, like I said, because as the world changes, you have to be kind of on the fly and be able to adjust to it. But you can't go right out the left ball field, leave the field, go onto the soccer field, and just keep <laughs> going into the football field. You right. know what I mean? When you're playing ball here, mm-hmm. uh, you got to stay in the same freaking game at least, and in the same area. Like, you can't be like, well, this inning, I really feel like swinging the bat again, so I'm going to now switch over to the other team so I can swing the bat again this time because I liked it last time. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I don't really want to run and catch the ball because I'm fat. I'm going to switch teams again this time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. now I realize it's not for such little subject that they change, but they do change it as they wish. Yeah. And I don't think that's representation of your local area anymore. I think at that point in time, you might have to call in a vote for that local area again. Or, if they want to switch that bad, step down and let somebody else take over. Or, I don't know, I'm not sure how that would work. At the very least, it should become an independent until the next election. Yes, they're still going to cast their vote most often with the new party. Oh, not necessarily. But they're doing it without the backing of the new party and the guarantee of well switch over to me here and I'll make sure um, by next year you're running this particular office or you're running this you know you're a minister of education now how does that sound to you mm. well gee that's what I always wanted yeah I'll switch to you yeah. you know what I mean like I'm not saying that happens because that would I'm pretty sure be some kind of legality in there but <laughs> what's said over coffee said over coffee without proof mm. so there's definitely issues with that <clears throat> um I think with the law idea, if you did it so like the laws had to be voted on, or major policies even, it's not going to bring, I don't how, think the government... How would you implement that? Like every time somebody wants to, to write a law, you would what? Go vote? Maybe? You'd have to pretty much just have a local area vote where, just, where everyone in the local... Just, just queue up your votes. Queue them up. For every six months, you know you got to go vote on your laws. Right. If you want something, it's going to happen every six months. You and pop down be, to the local... It should be way more than 50 local municipalities or local, like you have setups, I mean, like just like they have stations everywhere else, and you simply go in with your ID. I know, I know a lot of people got all pissed. you got to have an ID to vote. I don't see a problem with that. That way you can't pretend to be somebody else. Yeah. I don't care if you've got the freaking ballot card or, or the voter's your, card in your it's hand. It's in your pocket. Just shut up and take it out of your pocket. Right, like show up, give the ID, this is who I am. They go down through a master list, they check it off, and once it's checked off, it's entered into a computer system, boom, you can never re-vote again. I mean, that's who you are. Mm. And then... I cast my vote on, yes, I like this law, yes, I like this one, no, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't. You know, they could have anywhere between one and 300 laws, whatever it is they want to bring forward for laws. But at the end, the tally is there, and if the public don't support a law, it doesn't get implemented. It's about representation of the but people. You have to, if you have to learn about the law ahead of time. You have to read through all that, that crap ahead of time. Yes. You can't, just, <laughs> you, can, you can't just show up and there'd be a little slot there that says, law about dogs. Yeah. Law about guns. I mean, you have to, you're going to have to have a lot of information to read. You're if not right there, they should have What's to be able, Maybe they should have it. What, what's your problem there? There's an educated public, and if you can't be bothered to educate yourself about the things that are ruling your life, you might have to check the box. You close your eyes and check the box. Or don't bother to cast the That's what I'm saying, right? You, I, I, maybe make it a mandatory. Re- give it, making it so that, making the excuse that people are going to have to read is a horrible reason to make them not have to vote. No, I don't think he's trying to say that. I think he's like, You'd have to educate yourself onto it, but... You can't maybe. do it. Uh, my point is you can't do it unless you do that. Right. Right. Um, right. Um, in which case, yeah. people are still going to... They're going to vote blindly, yes or no, <clears> or whatever else. you can't have a list of things there on a ballot, and they just say things like, you know, basic law against... Uh, whatever. Law against guns, law against I mean, dogs, law against there's a, there's a, there's horses. A bill, there's, a bill, there's a bill, this thing. You, you would just write it out as the, as the actual law. Yeah, but it's criminal code... Like, for instance, C-51. Criminal code of Canada is smaller... Over 44,000 laws in Canada right now. If you ask the cops or the lawyers for a list of all the laws in Canada, they can't even give it to you. There's too many fucking laws. And outdated and archaic laws that have been changed and changed. That actually is another good point. So you would make the public more aware of how many ridiculous laws are getting out there. And if they became more aware of these things, they might start getting more involved with these things. Maybe make it mandatory uh, that if you're going to have the vote every six months, we'll say, on laws, that it's mandatory... They can only present the law to the public in the first five months, making it that way. There's a 30-day period, like for the last submission. Like I'm going to, we're going to vote 
on in on the end of June and the end of December, we'll say on laws, just to pick two time periods, right? You're gonna those are the two times you're gonna be a year vote on laws. That means at the end of May is the last chance for the government to submit a law <coughs> for June's vote, because that gives you a whole thirty days to be able to go to a public place, read up all the ins and outs of the laws. At that point in time, too, all the parties at that point in time could give their views on the law to see if you agree with your political party platform. If it, you know, yeah, they support this. Why? And I hear all the good points are bad. If you want to go just political, <coughs> you can talk to your neighbors, your dog, the police, anybody you want to. You can talk to informal forums like what we're having now and, and where they present good points or bad points in their opinion about the law. Um, and then you can do the research yourself because you have 30 days to do it. Now, don't get me wrong. 30 days is not a lot of time to some people, and it's a very long time to some people. But at that point in time, with 30 days, you can educate yourself on the law and vote yes or no. Or you can choose not to bother to go vote on a freaking law to begin with because you didn't vote for the parties either. You don't care. But it makes it that the people choose. And like Brian said, I would actually make it so that of the voters that vote, it should be a higher percentage to make the law happen yeah. than just 50. Because at no point in time should 51 people get to choose and dictate what happens to the other 49. It's too big or too close of a, of a race there. Um, maybe make it 60 or 70% to pass a law or something like that. Because let's say, if the people don't want the law, we shouldn't be governed by said law. As a body of people. Like, for instance, you know, you're not allowed to murder people. Well, I'm pretty sure that law will get passed pretty fast because with the exception of a few extremists that don't want it to happen, the bulk of the people do not want to be able to go home and have your wife, kids, dog, cousin, mother, father murdered and with no repercussions. So things are going to pass. But things like, do you want to have to slow down to 30 or take a couple hundred dollar fine any time the guy feels like it? Uh, and and raw, laws that are written uh, very open would have to get very specific. Like, for instance, the law of the schools. Within 100 feet of the road, where, by, by when asked to the RCMP, where does the road officially stop? Some will tell you the pavement. Feet from the center Some line. people will tell you 33 feet from the center line. Yeah. But the law is not written. Either one of those is from the edge of the road, yeah. leaving it open to interpretation to the police. Some will say within sight of the road. For instance, when you're going through the school, if they're in the lower playground, you can see them. But technically, inside that school zone, they can be playing in their own backyard. If it's within 33, if it's within 100 feet of the road, you can be nailed. But it has to be within sight. Well, could you see the person or not? Can they prove you could see the child or not? Or did the, for instance, did the RCMP just happen to know the kids are playing there because he watched them run around the house a few minutes ago? I can still nail you, right? You know, and then you run into the, the argument, why is it a couple hundred feet from the school down here, them playing in their yard, because it's still technically within the range of the school zone, why is that covered? But yet, when they're walking down a sidewalk in town, it's not covered for the same thing. I have to slow down to 30 because they're within 33 feet of the road. Yeah. You know, they're within three feet of the road. Nope, I can drive fast there because, what, town kids are smarter than country runs? Or, or you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's left very open, and therefore, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure the law would have been shot down and squashed before it even took hold, because there's too many open questions people could ask. What about this? What about that? You know, when you say 100 feet from the road, do you mean from the edge of the pavement? Do you mean from the edge of the ditch? Do you mean from 33 feet from the center line? What do you mean? Because when you ask cops, I've, I've asked two of the RCMP, two different ones, and they each gave me a different answer which means it's open to them to interpret the way they want, and then I have to pay large amounts of money to get legal representation to argue that, and then have to hope that the judge involved doesn't agree with that particular cop's view of the edge of the road. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's too open for interpretation. So I don't think it would bring anything to a standstill. It just would mean they're not going to waste all kinds of time and taxpaying dollars and effort into trying to pass <coughs> knee-jerk reaction laws. Like, <clears throat> right now it's being reviewed, the Retea Parsons Law, on cyberbullying. What counts as cyberbullying? Because me calling, telling you I think your opinion is a dumbass opinion is technically cyberbullying. And if you really want to push it, not even you, but if somebody else happens to read the thread on Facebook or wherever, finds it to be cyberbullying, they can bring forth the complaint and stuff like that and be charged with it. Right now there's a case going between two businessmen that got into a name-calling contest back and forth. Technically it's cyberbullying and they're being charged for it. And it has to go to the Supreme Court to see if it is expressing your freedom of opinion and freedom of expression is being impeached on, right? If this law had been brought forth, and I'm not saying cyberbullying isn't a serious matter, mm -hmm. but if this had been brought forth, all these points would have had to have been brought forth before the law got passed and worked out in detail so people knew what is the law and what's not, what are their rights and what's not. And by having it written that way, you can't get abuse of the laws or as much abuse of the law or authority 
on someone's part because it's clearly written in the story. And you wouldn't have laws that so many people disagree with having to be followed strictly because a few small amount were influenced by a corporation, by a government, by a lobbyist group, by a, by a, by a, by a. And yes, I realize when they say the term lobbyist group, most people refer to the states when they get paid people to, to lobby, da, da, da. But you have the same idea in Canada when you simply have, if you have enough political clout, you can pull forth laws or at least force the agenda on the local <clears> area by causing too much stress and public damnation if you don't. And like I said, you get a lot of knee-jerk reactions. So <clears throat> in the end, our government system, we elect officials, whether we like them or not, because that's what they are to choose from. And if, <clears throat> and if you don't like them, any of them, you're out of luck because that's what's there. Yeah, their life's going to be ruled by them. Once they're in, like you said, they can change sides willy-nilly as they choose to mm. without any repercussions. Um, all they've got to do is once they're in, <laughs> sit back and ride the wave and not technically break a law. And even if you do break a law, the, I'm sure the investigation will take long enough, you know, four years anyway. Um, and very quick on that one, pensions, since we're talking about breaking laws very quick and passing laws. Why the hell is it that if a political representation, that you, a political member that you voted in or, or a public service breaks a law and they're booted out for it, they still get their freaking pension. Oh, yeah. What the fuck for? It's obviously they've abused the trust of the public by breaking said public laws, yeah. <clears throat> and yet they still get a full pension. It's like there's just absolutely nothing that can be done. No repercussions. There's no repercussions. There's no nothing. I mean, Christ, Rome used to have it. That is, if you were really, I think it was Rome, you had, if you were a really horrible leader at the end of your term, they did, they did a vote. Were you, better for the, were you better for the people? If you weren't, you're gone. And I don't mean just you're out of luck. I mean, you're gone. Yeah. Now, that's a bit extreme nowadays, but the point is, if you've benefited through illegal activity in your position as a legal represent, as a representation of the public, you should not be able to gain from that. No. As a common person, you cannot gain from your crime. You cannot financially gain from a crime. Well, not, not supposed to be able to. to. And, and you can far less do it than you can... I mean, as a political leader, you're caught stealing, abusing your funds, spending the money for your own personal gain, and they boot you the fuck out for it? You're still high and dry as long as you get over four years in. You're still collecting a pension. Now, the whole time you could be robbing the fucking place blind. Yeah. That's responsible government. And yet, the responsible government says, no, we're still paying for it anyway. Why? Well, you know why. It's because if they do it in the future, they want to be able to still get their dollars at the end. That's right. That's right. But you shouldn't get your dollars for it. I mean, if you're in the military and you're in for 21 years and you get booted the fuck out for <laughs> criminal activity, guess how much of your 25-year pension you get? Yeah. You paid in a lot, but you're not going to get nice coverage come 65. And, uh, another thing is, with, with our financial problem that we talked about earlier. Why the hell does government officials start getting their pensions so fast? Why don't you have to wait till you're 65 or 70 like the rest of us? Uh, well, how, when do they get them? I thought it was 55 or something. It's 45 or 55. It's not very long. I'm pretty sure it's 55. Okay, it's still 10 years before, or 17 yeah. years, or yeah. 12 years before everybody else. Why? Yeah. Yeah. you got to live like everybody else is. Why do you start living off the taxpaying dollars? What do they say? They, they contribute 6 to 1 or something? Is it? <clears throat> not even. No, six to one. Like if you put in a dollar, they the government puts in six. Yeah, that. for them, yeah, it's retarded. For us, it's six to one the other way. You got to give six for them to give you one. Wait a minute. What? Say that again. For for a politician, for their pension contribution, like what they they give a certain amount of dollars in, and then the government gives so much into the pension it's, fund it's, for them it's, as well. It's ridiculous. I might be wrong, but it's, it's like it's, ridiculously it's high. Still ridiculous. So if I was, if you were a politician, a politician, they take so much of your so much of your paycheck into your pension, like everybody else does. But the government then matches it by like six dollars to your one. It's ridiculous. Or, or some Everybody such amount. Like we'll have to find out. So maybe we'll find out the next time and see. Of us, six of us are paying off one guy's pension. Yeah. Pretty much. And, and and every single year goes by, they simply choose to invite ten more of their friends into the government positions. We're too top heavy, and I don't believe, even though we live in a democratic society or a democracy, I don't think it's really you know there's too much democracy going on. It's really just. Choose your next four-year dictator, and they can swap. And there's no there's no repercussions if they change around or they don't hold true to their their platform or their party or their promises or their anything. And even true, like we just discussed, there's not even any having to hold true to the laws within the same country that we all have. Like there's there's different standards of law even oh, for yeah. them versus yeah. us. Yeah. Anyway, guys, right quick here, um, we're gonna wrap up here. We got less than a minute, and uh, then we'll be on to, into the next show. Is there anything in particular you guys want to wrap up with very quick, Brian? No, I'm good. Jeff? No, I think we, we, I think, uh, we touched on a few things that, that uh, 
you know, sore spots for everybody, the things that we don't like. And, uh, yeah, I think that's said what I want to say. All righty. Thanks for having me. Oh, I just love having you here and some of that. On the next show here, I'm hoping to uh, get into more issues maybe we have, you know, with the government, the way the system runs and stuff like that, and possibly even touch base onto the actual, like, four main parties or how the whole party system works against more, and the actual platforms of said parties, the problems we have with them. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's points to every party we like, and there's points to every party we're going to dislike, some more than others. So, until then, here's Common Man's Corner with Brian, Wayne, and Jeff. And, well, here's a political up to you to everybody. Have a good one.